I just wanted to say how proud I am. I work as a team manager in Lincolnshire Children's Services and our director and directorate management team have always been committed to early help um, and we believe the correct people to do this work with children and families are those people that know the children and families, are those people that have already got a relationship and that ongoing will have a relationship, not people from children's services that dip in and out of lives. So I was really privileged to take a role as team manager for team around the child which is our multi-agency arrangements um, for early help in Lincolnshire and it kind of me taking this role coincided with my assistant director allowing me to go on the five day signs of safety training in Annick with Viv and Andre which really inspired me to when I was building my new team to really put signs of safety at the heart and role modeling the principles and the practice in what my team were doing. My team are a team of early help consultants. It was a new role that was created um, and we really believe in supporting and empowering our voluntary sector partners, our health partners and primarily our school partners to actually undertake some really good early help work and that communicating in that multi-agency way in that team around the child or TAC is the way forward. Over the last two to three years, we've moved from 1,000 cases um, in Team Around the Child, about half of which run by schools, to, as of last week, 2,704 cases open to TAC, 65% of which are led by schools, and only a quarter of which are led and have involvement from the local authority. I can tell you about the numbers, I can tell you about the figures, but actually, Alison is going to show you the absolute power of that work that our partners have been doing. So this is me. I'm Alison and I'm the school family worker at Parish Church Primary School in Gainsborough, which is kind of up the coast north a bit in Lincolnshire. Um, our school has 315 children on roll, ranging from 4 to 11. And um, we know stuff happens to kids because we spend a lot of time with children. We know circumstances beyond their control happen to them and we see it. We see children's behaviour change at school. We see their appearance change. They come and tell us stuff's happening at home they tell us how they're feeling about that sometimes family and carers come in and let us know what's been going on what the changes are and what the worries are and it's when those worries come to the front and come to the fore it's our privilege to get alongside those children and the families in which they are placed to support them to get to a happier and safer place about a year ago, I was asked to share more locally, not big like this, just local, um, about what we do. What, is it, what does early help look like from a school's point of view in education in, prime, in the primary setting? And the best possible way I can do that is to kind of walk you through some of the work that we've done with the children. So let me introduce you to Jake. Now, all of this happened to Jake. I am not, you'll be pleased to know, going to dissect it. However, what I will tell you is that Jake's world fell apart when he was in year six. He was 11 and in the November, dad left and the bottom of his world dropped. Uh, Jake was a bright, sparky, happy, articulate young man, a great relationship with the adults in school. He had a wicked sense of humour, really positive peer relationships. Overnight, that changed. Overnight, we saw the effects of that. Mum worked with us immediately, let us know what was going on. And like every school, our first port of call was always to talk to the child. But actually, our journey talking to children has changed in the last two years because we've adopted the signs of safety way of talking to them. We took on board the wizard and the fairy and the three houses. So when we first started talking to Jake... We didn't just say, how are you feeling, mate? We actually used the structure of the three houses to talk to him. And it became evident that he was really struggling. He was uh, disrespectful and rude at school. He was struggling with his peer relationships. He became violent towards mum and his brothers at home. And he really needed some help. And he was struggling with his relationship with dad. So we actually asked mum and dad to come in and we structured that initial conversation with them using Jake's voice and using the signs of safety three houses. And we wrote what we considered in school just as our early help plan. We, at that time, there were no other agencies involved. We just kind of looked at what worked well, what the worries were, so what did we need to happen next? Things deteriorated and um, he became uh, wanting to self-harm, threatened to use knives, threatened to use knives on dad. Um, I was able to use what what we call an early help advisor so schools can tap into an on-call social worker just for advice no it didn't meet children's social care threshold but actually go and fill out your early help assessment which is based around the signs of safety model 
and let's write a safety plan. So wrote a safety plan with mum around the knives and what to happen with the risky behaviour and actually called everybody together that was involved in this family. Let's have this early help assessment. Now it is a form, but actually what we say to parents is this helps us have an amazing conversation with you. We will find out what you're worried about and we will make a plan as to work out what is to happen next. That's what we did for Jake. We sat down we all got together and it became evident, heck yeah, we needed to get extra agencies involved here, supporting mum and supporting him. And so we did that. We are very careful to explain to our families and our children that team around the child is not something we do to you. It's something we do with you. We together sit down and go through the process. We together write the plan. Together we review it to see what needs to happen next. So I'd like to show you Jake's three houses, some months on, all the supports got into place, we had the agencies involved, and um, his house of good things, he says, having a pet, that wasn't on the plan, but mum went out and got a pet anyway, it's a little kitten, and he's loving having this kitten. The kitten requires nothing of Jake, but Jake is able to cuddle it and talk to it, and that was brilliant. He says that from his plan, speaking to me as his learning mentor was really useful at the time. I said, hey, that's great, Jake, what do you need from that though, moving forward? Need to see you three times a week. Fab, that's in his wishes column. That goes on the plan. Um, he's talking here and he's saying, I've got to stay in the front room when dad comes. Um, very early on, it's very clear Jake struggled with his relationship with dad. He actually wanted dad dead. To kill him went in the wishes column. We had to work around that, as you might imagine. So we kind of came up with a much better plan uh, about what needed to happen when dad appeared to collect his younger brothers for contact. So we kind of had a very practical plan in place that didn't involve what he really wanted to do. But it was working at this point several months in. He said, actually, I'm not that bothered when dad comes. I don't notice anymore. He's enjoying getting a takeaway. Dad takes his younger brothers to McDonald's for tea. Although Jake's struggling with not wanting a relationship with dad, he kind of does at the same time. He says, I'm not being treated fairly. So we put it to dad. Do you think do you mind getting a takeaway? We set a budget, it all went on the TAC plan, and here we're reviewing it. It says, yes, enjoying getting the takeaways. I now feel like I'm being treated fairly by Dad. But can I have a McDonald's next time? Yep, goes in the wishes column, goes on the plan, he got a McDonald's next time. And you see here, he's talking about his feelings, and I'll come on to that in a little bit, because he had a fab way of describing his feelings. Um, he says um, in his worries column there, some people are a bit mardy. That's a Lincolnshire expression for moody, kind of grumpiness fab expression um, but, he, um, but we were kind of dealing with that through the learning mentor work and if I'd like to share with you some other children that we've worked with using the um, three houses we knew about this little boy and his brothers because mum had come to tell us that their behavior was shocking at home um, they were aggressive with each other and we knew because mum had told us that dad wasn't at home at the moment um, they were caught undertaken in place because he'd been very emu emotionally abusive at home but we didn't know the impact it had on the children because they'd not disclosed anything to us. So the first conversation was with, tell us what's going on. So he's writing these good things. Comes to his house of worries. He says, it's not a worry now, but it was. Because in the past, when dad was at home, uh, daddy scared us as he was shouting a lot. Okay, so I wanted to unpack that. So we drew a house. And at this point, it's me writing because he's thinking too much to be able to write at the same time. So hey, tell me, what does it look like then with daddy in the house? So he says, we couldn't concentrate. Daddy sometimes shouted quite a bit and would swear. He'd storm off, he'd get um, stressed really quickly. So we kind of build, building up a picture of what it looks like. He was a fab mathematician, so I said, draw me a pie chart. How much of the time was rubbish and how much of the time was good? Two thirds of the time, dad was shouting, wasn't great. I asked him to scale it when dad was sh shouting. Tell me if zero is or really unsafe, you feel awful, but 10 is the safest and happiest you can feel, where do you, where do you scale it? zero to four. Before this conversation, mum had no idea of the impact that that environment had had on her children. We spoke to all three of the brothers, the same picture emerged for all of them. We were able to take the voice of the child back to mum and say, it's what's happening. So we were able to put a package of support in through team around the child to support that family as they move forward. Um, this piece of work was done with a little six-year-old who, um, whose mum and dad lived in separate houses and um, Mum was convinced that dad was saying stuff behind her back and distressing the little boy. She was convinced it was happening, saying nasty things about her. So two sheets of paper, exactly the same thing on each side, same emotions, same set of questions, same scaling. Tell us what happens at dad's house. Tell us what happens at mum's house. A picture emerged of a very happy, normal little six-year-old who was equally happy at mum's and equally as happy at dad's. 
took it back to mum. She got the reassurance she needed. Actually, things were okay. They were a team around the child at that time, but actually that helped mum realise she didn't need to worry about some things that maybe she thought uh, she needed to. We've kind of expanded uh, the words, uh, and the, the uh, wizard and the fairies to footballers, perhaps not identifying with the English footballers at the moment. <laughs> Uh, go Wales for tonight, uh, and some little girls really have identified with princesses, so we've gone down the princess route as well. But basically, we'll do anything. This next picture is, um, oh, we use scaling quite a lot. When we have written our team around the child plans, we have an outcomes column. What do we, what will success look like? And with this little boy, we're looking at that column, and um, he's scaling it, and he's drawn a sad face over the zero, actually, or, yeah, he's kind of, it was in colour. And we'd identified with mum and dad that they were really worried that he was emotionally closed off and didn't want anything to do with him, didn't want to talk to him, it didn't, he didn't want to talk to them, and they were really, really concerned about this. And, and a worker had gone in and done some direct work with the family about kind of how could they do stuff at home to be helpful. One of the things was eat together. And at the end of the eating together, because you've all got to eat, so kind of eat together, have a bit of a talking time, 10 minutes. He's saying... It's not happening, Mrs. Russell. It's as low as it can go. Um, and his reasons, his words, because we aren't doing it, I like it when we can discuss what's happened at school. He wasn't emotionally closed off. He didn't have the opportunity. So we're able to take that back to the mum and dad and say, do you know what? He does want to talk. His words were, I like it when we talk and discuss what happens at school. They just needed to make sure that they gave him the opportunity in the family home and similarly, we were, we were doing some work around the bedtime story and being with the children. And he's saying, it's, it's, it's a zero, Mrs. Russell, because it's not happening. And he came up with his own solution. Our family need to read. We could do it all together. We could, we could all go upstairs to my mum and dad's bedroom and mum and dad could take it in turns. They could have a night off on alternate nights. He'd come up with a fab solution. So we were able to take that back to the family. And they kind of had a much better understanding of the capability of their son and what he was really like, which really helped to move things forward for that family. This is not a great picture, I do apologise. But there are three cardboard houses there. And we, with our younger children, we've got three houses and we've got some emotion faces that we can attach to the houses. And um, we've got picture cards. So those who are less verbal and much younger still have the opportunity to tell us what's going on in their life. What is great about their life? What are they worried about? And what would their dream house look like? So no matter who we work with, we've got that opportunity to bring the voice of the child to the family and to the situation. Now back to Jake. So he was talking about his feelings. And I'm quite a visual person, and I kind of always see feelings on a graph, and it's sometimes big and spiky when something awful happens to us, and how things kind of get a bit wavy when it's normal. And he went, Mrs. Russell, I don't see it like that. Okay, Jake, how do you see it? He says, I've got four feelings tubes. Okay, I've got an okay, I've got a happy, I've got a sad, and I've got an angry. And when I first worked with him at the very beginning, there was no, nothing in happy and angry, and everything was in sad. No, nothing in happy and okay, everything in sad and angry. It took up the whole sheet of A4. But this is when the support's been in place for a while. This is when we're listening to him and keep tweaking his plan to make sure it's representative of what he, he needs. And you can see here, sad and angry are much less, and there's happy and there's a whole heap of okay, which was really great. And we used that to monitor, monitor how he was doing throughout the whole process. On the right is his drawing. When it got really dark for him, he didn't want to live anymore. He thought he'd be better off if he wasn't around. And I asked him one day, I said, does that look like anything in your head? Have you got a picture of how that, how looks, how that looks? And he said, yeah, I'm in a cave, a really dark cave, can't turn around and if I could I can't even see the entrance okay that's that's sad uh, we got more support for him at that point um but I used that imagery and I kept saying to him where are you in the cave where are you in the cave and at this point it was the first time he ever drew, drew it and he said I'm 15 meters from the entrance of the cave Mrs Russell and he had a little scale as this trees at 10 meters 20 meters and 100 meters and he was chuffed to bits with that drawing absolutely pleased as punch because he was able he knew he'd made the progress himself and um, I can tell you that he has transitioned into year seven and um, we were able to close team around the child we put a sustainability plan in place we involved the secondary school in that planning um, he knew what he needed to carry on doing to keep making good progress. Mum knew where he needed to go to get some extra support. So it, all in all, 
a success and we listened to him. So Callum, Alice and Kai, um, I took over as a lead professional in Team Around the Child from another agency. And when we got this, uh, it was really hard to see what was really going on. We were very tied up in mum and dad. And it was really not easy to see what need, was needed for the three children in the family. And a TAC forum that um, Lincolnshire County Council uh, provide for us as uh, educators to kind of go to to keep in the loop. And um, we talked with our early help consultant who said, I can come out and case map that and we can see what we need to do. So that's what we did. And in doing that, Alice and Kai no longer needed to be a team around the child because actually there were no presenting worries for them at all from anybody. And we were able to put into place a very specific plan related to some very specific worries around Callum. But for us as a school, actually this family and that conversation at Case Mapping set us on a journey with words and pictures. Um, but words and pictures to deal with tricky situations and the stuff of life that perhaps sometimes don't get explained to children. Um, Mum in this family has long-term mental health issues. She has scars all the way up her arms from self-harming. And the children were beginning to ask questions about mum's scars. And it was very evident when we had a very, very up and down days. And how are they going to start talking about that? I wanted to refer them to another agency at that point for support. But the early help consultant said, let me tell you about words and pictures. So we sat down with mum and we said, what does it look like for you then? What's going on in your head and what's happening? And this is what we wrote to be able to explain mum's mental health and the self-harm that she um, engaged with so mummy has a poorly head this means mummy doesn't always think like we do this means mummy is sometimes sad scared worried angry when mummy is sad she likes cuddles from everyone when mummy is angry she likes peace and quiet in her bedroom mummy goes to see a head doctor to help her mummy still loves us and for the self-harm you remember mummy has a poorly head she doesn't always think like we do Sometimes, because mummy has a poorly head, she hurts herself. When mummy does this, it's not safe. That's why she sees the head doctor. We wrote that together. A draft went off to her psychologist for a bit of tweaking, and that's what we've used for the family. Um, Thank you, was said the parents. We can talk to the children about this now. It's so simple. They couldn't begin to comprehend that you could explain what, in, in adult terms, is quite complicated in such a simple way. And we've had occasion to use this several times as mum's gone into different crises over the last year. The kids know that's those words and pictures off by heart now. Um, another little boy was fighting in year five. And a bit out of the blue, did the three houses work with him? It became evident that he was beginning to see that his family looked different from other families because he didn't live with his mum or his dad. He lived with his auntie and his uncle. Asked auntie to come in did the three houses with her what's going on tell me the story and what transpired was um we needed to actually have that conversation with this young man because nobody had explained to him why his family looked the way it did and why his family didn't look like some other families so we wrote this together on the 3rd of september 2004 you were born just before you were one mum rang uncle and auntie please can jay come and live with you they said yes and you went to live with them we don't always know why some mums ask other people to look after their children. Sometimes that is the kindest and safest decision a mum can make. Uncle and auntie love you very much, and that's all the members of that immediate family around that heart. You will always be a part of their family and their, his cousins' names. You also see your dad and his family. You have a family that love you very much. The outcome? No more fighting um, at all. And his auntie said, I can't believe you've managed to say that in such a simple way. <laughs> the beauty of words and pictures for us in school. In fact, they took the draft home and never saw me again for two weeks and I was a bit worried. <laughs> so I went to them, everything all right? Oh yeah, we just started using it straight away. Bring it back, I'll laminate it so it can stay neat and tidy and won't get tatty. Um, another little girl that I worked with, again, at early help, no other agencies involved. Uh, Mum and dad separated, both had different partners, both living in different houses. Little girl suffered an awful lot of loss, loss of the family home, loss of some really precious possessions, like her favourite cuddly teddy bear called Rose. But when we did wishes with her, she wanted everybody to live together under the same house and didn't understand why that wouldn't be a good idea at all. And she was very consistent with that wish. So um, sat down with dad and said, OK, then, so how come do you think we can talk about, tell me about the family, tell me what's gone on. And this is what we came up with. At first, we all lived together. Sometimes grown-ups decide not to live together anymore. That's what happened to mummy and daddy. They still love you very much. 
When this happens, children can feel sad, angry, worried, happy. That's all okay. It's good to talk to someone about how you feel. And we identified who was around her that she could talk to. So it was dad, mum, nana, granddad, grown-ups at school. Her and her brother live with daddy now and dad's new partner and her daughter. You'll still see mummy. Daddy and mummy love you very much. Dad said, I'm a dad. I don't know how to do this sort of stuff. <laughs> he was really grateful that somebody had actually taken the time to sit down with him to explain this to, to them. Her wish changed. That wish for everybody to live together was no more. And we used to do a fill up a square and I used to say, colour in how much happy you are and how much sad you are. And happy got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as we supported her in school. And, f and the last words and pictures I'd like to share with you, actually this, um, we took over, this was a child in need initially, there was domestic violence at home and the perpetrator had really beaten up mum very badly and was actually on remand in jail awaiting trial. Um, it was stepped down to team around the child when all the risks were felt to be dealt with and the family moving on in the right direction. What became very evident was that nobody had sat down and really taken the time to explain what had gone on and what was going on and what might happen in the future. Um, had an honest and open conversation with mum um, and she kind of went, how can you start to explain that? Just tell me your story and we'll work it through together. So this is the story for this little girl. Um, I want, this is mum's perspective, I want to tell you about some difficult times in my life. Here goes. After your dad and I split up, I had a boyfriend, as you know. It's weird and I don't know quite how, but I ended up in tricky situations that I didn't like and weren't safe for me or for you. He would say such mean things, it hurt my feelings so much and they just weren't true. He also hurt me by punching me and hitting me. That's why he's going to court. He broke the law by doing that. Some people say that's just their way of saying they love you and care about you. I know that's not true. When someone loves you and cares about you, they don't deliberately say horrible things to you and about you. They don't use their hands to hurt you. They use their hands to hold your hand, hug you and help you. They make you feel good about yourself and want to know how you feel and they want your opinion and value it. Positive and healthy relationships have their ups and downs, but you don't end up in tricky situations that aren't safe. I've learned such a lot and I won't let it happen to me or you again. There was a message that mum wanted to send to that little girl. I've done the work and I'm not going to let it happen again. Um, and mum said, wow, that's great. You've managed to tell the story in a way I can talk to her about it. They had an honor, honest and open conversation. The little girl understood and was able to, they were able to move forward together into a better future. Um, we get lots of fab feedback from the early help process. Um, children say things like, I can count to 10 and go to my room to calm down now. It works. I'm less angry. Rules on my bedroom door are working. I feel really happy. My room is protected. Um, little boy said, it's made things so much better at home. I talk to mummy now. I used to write in a book. I've got a happy and a bad book. I don't need to write in my bad book anymore. Yay. Um, mums and dads say, if you hadn't told me what Charlotte said, I wouldn't have stopped and seen what I needed to see. It's made things so much better. Another parent, it's given us the opportunity to put routines and structures in place to help him communicate and connect with us more. There are lots and lots of positives, but I want to end with this jar of sweets. Uh, there, there are bonbons in there. And um, we had a little girl transfer to us midterm and she got flagged up. Um, because of her attendance, because I'm also the attendance officer. But we have a whole school approach to early help. So when that happens, our response is come in for a chat, come in for that conversation that's guided by an early help assessment. When we did the three columns with mum, out came a story of horrendous domestic violence and sexual abuse towards the little girl. Mum assumed we knew. Mum assumed that records had followed her, but she'd gone from refuge to refuge and then into private rented accommodation and no records had followed her. She'd fallen off the radar. No wonder this little five-year-old didn't want to go to school. She was scared not to be with mummy anymore. And when I did the fairy with her, and I said, what will make school better? She said, sweets. I said, what kind of sweets? She went, and she described them, and I went, bonbons. And she went, yeah. So I said, if I get a bar of, jar of bonbons and put them in our office, do you think you'll come to school on time? She went, yes. She did. The next day, she ran to school. Um, and her attendance is now above the 90% threshold. 
But actually, the biggest win for us as a school is that that has started an amazing relationship with that mum. The little girl felt listened to, mum knew that she'd be listened to, and that the little girl was being listened to. And we have guided her because we've supported her going to Wildas, the local domestic abuse service, because she'd never got the chance to process what had happened. And now she comes into school for support, we support her, and they're on the right track to getting the right kind of support for a brighter and happier and safer future, which is why we do what we do, isn't it? Thank you. Hello, I'm Danielle Marshall and I'm the project lead for Lincolnshire Children's Services and I just wanted to say a huge thank you. Um, both Alison and her manager have come here today. So we drove up yeah, last night, they've taken two days out of school which as you can imagine it's a busy time. One is a teacher so they're actually in school and obviously they're a fab family support worker. When she started this role she was doing six hours a week, she's now full time and permanent. We are, as you can imagine, you're probably all wanting to steal her. It's just so fantastic to see the early help work that goes on. And in Lincolnshire, we couldn't be prouder. We couldn't keep our thresholds as they are. We hold a lot of risk in early help, yet it really does work. And seeing schools like this makes us realise that it isn't all about social care. It's about partnership working, bringing everybody together. And you don't have to be a qualified social worker or to have been on the five-day training in order to do words and pictures as this fantastic lady has shown. So thank you very much.